Uh, Neil O'Brien. MP, who's here with us in the studio, Conservative MP. Uh, what do you make of this? What do you think when you uh, see those images of Natalie Elphick there cozying up with the Keir Starmer? I just think it's ridiculous. Natalie is um, to the right of about nine-tenths of the Conservative Parliamentary Party. Um, it tells you everything that she is not going to run for election again. She's not actually going to ask the people of Dover what they think of her bizarre decision to defect into the arms of a man who she has been, as you've just seen, slating for the last five years because he is weak on illegal immigration. He's a human rights lawyer who will do nothing to stop small boats. He's also weak on legal migration. He just wants more and more people to come. And she's been the person pointing this out again and again and again. And now she expects us to believe her when she says... But she's right I, too, isn't she, Neil? I mean, we're going to come on to a report that you've co-authored about immigration in just a little moment. But if we can stay on this for, for a, a, a little this, bit. Yeah. Uh, she does say that uh, Rishi Sunak's government is failing to keep our borders safe and secure. That's demonstrably true. Things would be a million times worse under Labour. So I think that's not quite a selling point, though, so, is it? So the Rwanda legislation is working. We see now the Irish government in a total panic, declaring that the UK is in fact a safe country. They're worried that people are trying to escape There's from the Rwanda more legislation. Than a thousand Ireland. people come across the Channel since the Rwanda it's, bill it's, received royal assent. It's, it's too high. I have argued that we should leave the ECHR to stop all these Article Eight ECHR appeals because I think our asylum system is totally out of control. People are being allowed to stay in this country for ridiculous reasons. People are saying, and, and, and allowed, being allowed to stay here because, oh, the health system in my country is not as good as the NHS. <laughs> oh, I will, I will struggle to reintegrate in Nigeria. I think that's absurd. And it's, it's a travesty of the things that were done in 1950 and 1951 when these systems were set up with the European Convention and the Refugee Convention. The framers of those texts never intended people would be able to stay for these absurd reasons. In fact, they were incredibly limited at first. Uh, but they have been warped out of all recognition by mm. the activity of activist judges and tribunals. So, look, I think the Rwanda legislation, I voted for Robert Jenrick's amendments to make it go further, but it mm. is already having a positive effect. We see people are trying to go back to the continent, amazingly, or going over to Ireland. And that tells you everything about whether they are really people who are destitute or people who are actually just here mm. uh, as economic migrants, trying to get around the reasonable rules that we have on, on legal migration. So, mm. look, it is working. It could be even stronger. But the one thing we do know for sure is under human rights lawyer Keir Starmer, he says even if it's working, he will get rid of the Rwanda scheme. What an absurd position to be in. I mean, he is going to make all of these things a hundred times worse and the number of people coming will absolutely mm. rock it. I think, look, I think it's bad. What this country needs is a massive dose of conservatism on this issue and we need to toughen our position, but it will get definitely worse under Keir Starmer. Well, you raised the idea that many of these people are economic migrants, and I suppose that's a Lovely and uh, well-prepared segue into your new <laughs> report, uh, co-authored um, by the former uh, immigration minister, Robert Jenrick, of course. Um, what is it that your report is arguing? Because the conventional wisdom has been, and it's been said by many people, the economic consensus is that economic migration is economically beneficial. So our report looks at how uh, migration policy overall should be set, and then it goes into some detail on how we should change things. So overall, we say that we should reduce migration down to the tens of thousands, down from the unprecedented levels that we've had over recent years. It's been running at about 600,000 a year net. So we've seen over the last 20 years, 7 million people added to the population by, by my, uh, migration. And in fact, about one in 60 people in this country now arrived in just the last year. So we've been having absurdly high levels of migration. The system that's put in uh, by Boris Johnson has led to a huge surge in migration from the rest of the world, uh, even as it tightened restrictions slightly against Much Europe. Much of that being students. Yeah, so uh, people come to study. One of the issues is that people come to study, but then they stay. And from developing countries, about between a quarter and a, a third of those who come as students actually just end up staying uh, for the long term. And one of the reasons for that, and this is something we say should be changed, is something called the graduate visa. Now. Uh, under David Cameron and Nick Clegg, under the coalition government, there was this post-work study visa, and we got rid of it because it was being hugely abused, and people were using it as a way around all of our migration controls, and that caused migration to fall back. Uh, but then the Migration Advisory Committee advised us against bringing this thing back again because they said it would just be a, a loophole and a way into low-wage work rather than real study in the UK. And unfortunately, it was brought back, and it's had exactly the bad effects that our independent Migration Advisory Committee warned we've seen a huge surge in people from, particularly from poorer countries, coming. You can pay, say, five grand to go on a one-year master's, and then you can work and bring dependents here, and they can all work too. 
And you can get around all these rules. You don't have to be working a particularly high salary threshold or any salary threshold. And so it's become a kind of a loophole and a way into the kind of gig economy and, and low wage work of the kind that we were trying to avoid with our migration rules. I think what's most frustrating for people is that they have been told that immigration must be lowered mm -hmm. and that the Conservatives are committed to controlling our borders and reducing to the tens of thousands mm -hmm. like you're proposing now. And it never seems to happen. Mm -hmm. Robin Gen Robert Jenrick co-authored this report with you. He has insisted that immigration needs to come down, yet when he was in the Home Office, he failed to get that onto the agenda. He failed to put that on the table and actually get it done. What is going on in the Home Office or in government that is preventing immigration from being brought down? because people have voted time and time again for it. Uh, so I had several things to say about that. The first is that Robert did actually bring in a package of measures as a minister which have cut migration over recent months and cut it quite sharply. They but invariably he, get he, like, diluted though, don't but they? But he, he believes, like me, that we need to go much, much further. Now, when David Cameron originally set the, the target to get migration back to a more normal level, the kind of level we had in the 1990s of the tens of thousands a year, uh, the problem with that is we didn't actually control migration from Europe because we were in the EU. And then migration from Europe was really high, and so that target was missed. But since Brexit, we down do control migration from Europe, and we can actually hit that tens of thousands of target. Um, so I do think we now can deliver But instead what happened, we just increased migration um, massively yeah. from yeah. everywhere else in the world. Yeah, yeah. And the problem has been that there is a lack of a joined-up central target. Unless you have that target overall of getting down to tens of thousands, unless you start to do what we recommend in this report, and having a kind of annual budget process for migration, mm. then every department will come and they will talk about some short-term problem and they'll say, mm. migration is a quick fix. Oh, there's, there's not enough truckers at the moment. Let's get more migration. Oh, there's a problem in the care sector. Let's get more migration. And before you know it, you've got hugely high levels of migration and you're not thinking properly about what the trade-offs are between different types of migration. So yeah. it's, it's, not just, it's not just about the numbers, is it? It's, no, it's exactly. about that's, the kinds of migration. That's exactly right. So what we say in the report is, as well as bringing the total down, we should do it by being more selective. So there are migrants who come here and they make a big contribution and they pay a lot of tax. And some types of migration from some countries, uh, that's particularly I mean, the case. on that, sorry, Neil, others, on that you say migrants from the Middle East, North Africa and Turkey, aged 25 to 64, are almost twice as likely to be economically inactive as someone born in the UK. So essentially we've invited people to come here, presumably we believe they're going to then work, and then they're twice as likely to be economically inactive. I mean, that's a recipe for economic disaster. Yeah, so in the last census, we saw that the employment rate of people who are born in the UK is higher than the employment rate of people who have come here from another country. And that tells you that migration policy is not on track at all. And as I say... Uh, hang on, doesn't that just account for those dependents that are brought with them? So people from the Middle East and North Africa are much more likely to have, for example, a wife who stays at home and a husband who goes out to work. That largely would account for having half as much economic activity. No, so I should have said, what I meant is, e even among those who are of working age, excluding the dependents and the children and so on, the employment rate is lower. Now, for some groups because, in some, because some countries... Because like, at home to look after children, perhaps. Yeah, so there's a lot of people who are inactively, economically inactive for that reason. There's a lot more uh, higher rates of unemployment as well among some groups. And if you look, broadly speaking, the trend is that uh, people who come here from rich countries, from either Western Europe or from countries like Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the US and so on, they tend to have very high employment rates and very high earnings mm. as well, and you get clearly a benefit from that. But then if you have a lot of uh, migration from uh, lower skilled people, from particularly from poor countries who have an incentive to come here, even if they're ending up working in the minimum wage, because it's still a lot more than in mm. a very poor country, then you will tend to see people who have either quite low rates of employment for the reasons you're just describing, mm. and also potentially quite low wages as well. So they're very unlikely and, to be net contributors. To and Neil, let's not, just, let's not pretend that the immigration debate is all about economics, is it? Uh, lots of people have raised issues of social cohesion, community cohesion, integration, etc., etc. I mean, would you do you talk about that in this paper? And do you discuss multiculturalism, where it's failing, yeah. where it's succeeding? We do talk about that. We talk about the cultural dimension of it and the very large number of people in this country who now can't speak English or can't speak English well. And it's very hard to have a coherent society or to feel like you're a member of a settled society if lots of people can't even speak to each other and if there's constant churn. And I think it's quite easy for people who are in affluent areas, uh, 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 in professional occupations, to not really see the effect that it's having because migration tends to be to areas that are poorer. When you, when you make a map of where people have moved to in migration over the last 10 years, it is typically towards the cities, inner cities, and to poorer areas. So a lot of people are missing the full impact mm. of what's happened over the last 10 years. Uh, but yes, absolutely. Our, our, the central point in our report is to say, look, let's change migration so it's more economically beneficial. Let's keep, keep the good migration, let's help for the economy, but let's reduce 
a kind of migration that's leading to people either not working or working in kind of low-wage gig economy, because overall, actually, that will mean we pay more tax mm. because the people coming will be taking out more than they pay in. I wonder mm. if Rishi Sunak is, uh, is listening. Uh, thank I you very so. much indeed, Neil O'Brien, Conservative MP.